Welcome back to another episode of Guggen Lab. Today, we're talking about umbrella rigs. Okay. There's a mother yonka ten. What are those? There we go. There we go. Hopefully that's a large mouth and not a striper. Yeah, it's large. Nice one. Nice one. Nice big large mouth. Let's go, baby. Good fish. Oh, this is why we are throwing the Alabama rig today. Because it gets big bites. Look at that. <laughs> fish and shell all morning. We decided to take the fight out deep. 25 feet of water. We're basically throwing a school of bait. That is the best way to summarize an umbrella rig or Alabama rig, whatever you want to call it. Look at that beautiful four pounder. Came up and crushed it. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. So in today's video, as you probably have figured it out, we're gonna be talking about the umbrella rig, how to fish it, the best time to use it, and some of the tools that you'll need to be successful out in the water. So uh, stick with this one and enjoy. Perfect rod for the A-Rig 2, um, at least one to get into, is the 7.5 Guggen Muscle. This is a heavy action rod. It's nice because it's not a huge broomstick. You're not gonna wear yourself out throwing this rod. So it's perfect for an A-Rig of this size, this caliper, and, it is, and it's super sensitive. They are just barely nipping at it that day. In this case, that guy clobbered it. The reel is a fast gear ratio reel. Sometimes I like burning it. Today we're just slow rolling it, but a, a, a big reel with a lot of line capacity spooled with either 20 or 25 pound test is, is what you want. So heavier gear, you're not gonna be using some super finessey stuff with this. The big rods so you can cast the thing out there and a fast gear ratio reel so you can keep those fish on their toes. But we're gonna get back at it and see if we can catch some more. A couple things to know before we get into this. Uh, depending on where you live, you are somewhat limited as to how you can fish this rig. For example, a lot of Northern states will only allow three hooks on an umbrella rig. Down here in Texas, where we're fishing today, it's a five hook limit. So just keep that in mind before choosing your uh, your umbrella rig. And that leads into my next point, picking the right one. There's a couple different types that I like, and right now there's just a myriad of uh, selections that you can choose. The ones I gravitate most towards are the ones with five wires. Very simple, nothing extreme. I know this may look like a literal chandelier to most of you guys, but this one is very conservative to a lot of the rigs out there on the market. What you have to add to this and get afterwards is your trailer and the jig head. Um, I'm using one eight ounce swim bait heads with a heavy wire hook. I like the lighter swim bait heads because you don't want to bulk up that A rig too much. The heavier the jig head, the heavier the bait's going to be and the bigger rod you have to throw. So you can get away with something even smaller than this. So a quarter or one eight ounce, quarter ounce is good too. On the back of that, I'm throwing saucy swimmers. On the outer edges of the Alabama rig, I've got some 3.8 inch size. And then right in the middle, I've got a 4.8. So something a little bit bigger to kind of off stance the smaller ones on the outside. You can kind of experiment, play around with different colors, uh, different lengths, different types of swim baits. I prefer the saucy swimmer because it's so soft and it just has an insane kicking motion when it's going through the water column. You could just barely be creeping this thing and those tails are still thumping at a fast pace. So that's the setup, that's what I like doing. And then of course these blades will complement the swimming action. Just think of this as like a giant spinner bait that catches a very big fish in deep water. That's the best uh, analogy I can think of. Okay, you've chosen your rig, you've got your jig heads, it's ready and armed with your saucy swimmers. Now it's time to find a good spot to throw this. You can fish these shallow. I've caught lots of nice fish out with the Alabama rig, but where this really excels is deep water. Fish that don't see lures very often. So right now we're fishing a pretty steep point. Maybe you'll tell we're really close to the bank, but we're sitting in 27 feet and behind me is roughly 80 feet of water. So this is like some pelagic stuff. Um, I've got my boat pretty far off the bank. I'm using my electronics to kind of scan around to see where those trees are at. There's a lot of trees underneath the water that we can't see right now, like a literal forest. Anytime I see a tree, a top of a tree, or maybe a huge brush pile, that's where I key in on. Generally right around the brush too are fish. So what this bait's gonna do is it's gonna call those fish up and out of the brush. Unlike a jig where you have to get in it, this is just gonna go right over the top and you're gonna entice those fish to come and eat. So I've actually found a few fish. Take a look right here. There's a bunch down there on the grass. A couple of big ones floating right out in front of me. You can see that's where that that uh, contour starts to get a little bit shallower. So I'm gonna keep my boat positioned right here. And I'm gonna cast directly at that mark. So once I found the fish, I know where I'm casting. 
Now it's time to dial in that retrieve. I'm gonna really slowly work this thing. I know that may seem counterintuitive because shad move quick. They're agile little fish. But um, the Alabama rig is something that you should fish slow and tedious. It is very similar to like a finesse rig. Like you're not supposed to burn this thing in unless like I said, you're fishing a super windy shallow flat. This is something you take your time with. Those fish are gonna come out of deep water to come up and crush this. So the faster you move it, the more difficult it's gonna be for those big bass to come up and just crush this thing. Just keep all that in mind, you know? Don't be afraid of this thing. For the longest time growing up in the Midwest, this was very daunting. It's a very scary rig, very complex. Requires a lot of work and also it's very snaggy too. Just look outside all that, tie it on, commit to it all day, and you might be surprised as to how effective the umbrella rig is. Well, gang, thank you guys so much for watching yet another episode of Guggen Lab. Be sure to subscribe, like this video, and check out some more of our tutorials on our channel. 